Uh, okay, welcome, welcome, welcome back uh, to a new episode of Shanghai Tripod. This week, uh, again, we have our same, same lovely, lovely friends of ours, uh, Dongu. Hello. Hello. Uh, we have Jacob. Yo. Hello. And me, Babuji, here together to talk about a new topic. And what is the topic today, Dongu? Today, we are going to talk about the weather. No, the the social class system in our great country. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about whether the social class system <laughs> <laughs> nice exist in our great middle country. Okay. Uh, so see, as as an outsider, I probably might not have so much views about class system in. Um, in China, so I'm going to be kind of like trying to understand from you guys, both from a perspective of uh, a foreign returned uh, Chinese as well as a person who ran away from China to become a foreign immigrant and then came back to China. So, are you scared, Babuji? Scared of what? Why are you already trying to run away from this topic? I'm Are not, you scared to offend some people? No, no, I'm not trying to run away. But I feel that um, class system is very, uh, it's very multi-dimensional. Like you know, like from where I come, uh, from India, I think there's there's class system based on caste, religion, a class system based on uh, money, you know, like elitism, and you know, a class system based on education, class system based on surnames. Uh, so probably I am more like an, uh, I, I think that China might have a different variant, you know, knowing we are all suffering from various variants these days, but you know, China might have a different variant of class systems. Yeah. And uh, uh, probably if you can enlighten us, uh, you know, enlighten us mere mortals from other countries, uh, that what kind of class system exists in China, we might be able to understand it better. And then I might probably would be yeah. Let me let me start with this question uh, to both of you guys. Okay. So when you see a person, when you meet a person for the first time, uh, what do you, how how would you judge that person? What do you care most about that person? Like for example, uh, the look, or like say let's be more. Mm, say how rich that person is, how powerful that person is, how talented or knowledgeable that person is, or how healthy <laughs> that person is. So what matters most to you? Jacob? Oh, oh okay. Uh, you mean like when we just get to know a person right not yes. like like the first yes. time we meet right first yeah. time meet it's always the looks then the way they talks but uh yeah slowly i would go down to uh how the how honest the person is about themselves like if a person is rich or like higher class they are honest about it or uh if the person is poor or struggling they're also honest about it I just don't like pretentiousness, like too much ambiguous talks about like not showing one's true self. That's my take. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Babuji? I think uh, my first impression probably would be uh, how they speak. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm both verbal and non-verbal communication. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, Thing for me and when I observe people right yeah. I don't really care how they look uh, even uh, it doesn't matter you know whether it's a, a date or uh, whether it's just generally meeting somebody right yeah. I, for me the way they communicate and way they are uh, communicating with surrounding you know with that with their surroundings not just uh, yeah yeah I, I think that, that creates an, uh, a strong impression on me and uh, and that basically helps me create a foundation of what I want to judge them on. Of course, mm -hmm. that later part, I probably will judge them on their fashion sense or their the knowledge, their uh, 
a lot of things. But my, for me, the base is how they communicate. I mean, the way they interact, the way their body moves, the way they are able to express themselves or not express themselves. You know, both it goes both directions. Uh, so I think that becomes kind of like the foundation. You know, mm. if, if I if I might say that way, that the foundation for me to create my process of judgment on that person. Okay, so you you both of you talk very personal, like how yeah. what kind of person you would prefer, what are the traits that you want to you might look for from a, a, a some somebody. But I mean, in the society, when we ge generically, when we talk about uh, social class, mm -hmm. most of the time it is like the, the class is decided by the, the asset, how wealthy that person is, uh, uh, right? Most of the time we do that. I think even in India, the class system also somehow decides how wealthy that person can be in modern day not necessarily but yeah in the past probably right uh, in modern day uh, caste system would I, i'm talking about india mm. not in china uh, but uh, you know I, I kind of agree that value of assets you own like let's say if i see a guy uh, you know very shabby you know yeah. shabby not by choice but shabby because of lack of choice, lack of options available. Yeah, I probably be think that he might not be, you know, same level as us. As in, again, I don't want to sound classist, but the reality is that a lot of times it becomes very difficult when you don't have common topics to talk to a certain yeah. group of people. Like if you don't have common interest, uh, and if you can't afford a common interest between these two people, then the communication becomes like if like. Say, let's say example of I like gaming, right? And uh, uh, for me to talk to a rich person who doesn't like gaming is also difficult because we don't share common yeah. interest. So he doesn't fall into my category of uh, my class. My class of people would be somebody who is intellectual, somebody who is well read and uh, plays games. Now that's my class. So in modern day, Praising yourself, huh? <laughs> no, no, just just my class. In, in a mo in modern day, uh, I think the class system is a little bit more you evolved than just assets. Uh, like I would be okay to talk to a person. Like if I have a choice to speak to a person who has a Porsche but is illiterate, right? Mm. Or a person who doesn't own a car but is very knowledgeable, like a professor. Yeah, my choice will always be. I will always see this professor higher than that rich guy. Yeah, I think we can put it that way. When, when, like me also, when I make friends, I don't really care like how much money that friend has, right? But I, I would want this person to have shared common topics with me, or like this person to be interesting. Oh, you mean friends? Friend? I don't make poor friends. Sorry. But Jacob is a <laughs> friend. <laughs> I'm not poor anymore. <laughs> Did you not realize that we started speaking to him again only once he got like married to a rich woman? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Didn't you guys realize that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only had the face to find you guys after I got rich. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, when you're at work, right, then your, your your purpose is very clear. You you want to get something done. You want to do business. So in business, I guess, like money, resources, all matter. Right. So, but I, I mean, work and life, sometimes you don't, you can't separate. So end yes. up like this, uh, the 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 practical mind also influence you somehow. In you you are living your personal life. Hmm. Uh, Jacob, since yeah. since you are like an uh, you know kind of immigrant in mm -hmm. China now again, yeah. as you are yeah. like an outside Chinese person, immigrant for life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you <laughs> feel that? Uh, uh, people around you judge you in a different light like they see that oh there's a guy chinese guy with a canadian passport oh that's a good do, question do, do they judge you as a elite do they think they, they, just to simply put it in a nicer way did your wife marry you because you have a canadian passport <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for <laughs> and that was my sell and that was my pitch like hey want a foreign passport <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, I usually like just hide my like passport to people when I'm in China. But yeah, I do feel that if uh, people finds out, or I sometimes I have to show that uh, my identity to the people. Yeah, they turn. Uh, some of them turn to like they they started to treat me like very differently. They do, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, we, like, how was like? Let's say, how, has it affected your like daily life? Let's say, a, a a woman say, oh, I don't think we can get well together. But then suddenly you say, hey, you know, I, I slap the passport onto off. her face. Then she suddenly <laughs> strips down to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> Accidentally, the change like oh, that. Sorry, my passport. Not that exaggerated, but yeah, they do. Yeah, if okay. they find out. Oh, I, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so this means that in China, some passports are more valuable than Chinese passport. Yeah, All passport, besides like maybe Mongolian. No, no I think, England, I guess, is uh, not yeah, that valuable. Not valuable yeah. I think <laughs> the passport which is more valuable is... Um, uh, White countries. Uh, yeah, yeah. Western Japan, countries. Japan, uh, uh, probably US. And I don't know US now, but Canada definitely. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some of the European countries. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Depends on the country. If the yeah. country itself is like, like richer than well, China. Yeah. I think that's that's that that is something which is I've seen a lot of times where uh, people are oh no you know he's they they mention it very clearly that oh he's a uh, Chinese born Canadian you know or Chinese born uh, American and then that they have a different value uh, in the market for a lot of things. They, they probably get better opportunity when it comes to marriage opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Options, sorry, marriage options. Mm. Also, I, I guess in terms of, uh, like if you want to start a business, if you're just a Chinese person, but uh, it might be, people might not be so forthcoming but if yeah. you tell them that you're a Chinese with, say, a, a Canadian passport and an American passport, they are a little bit more forthcoming when it comes to trying out new businesses with taking them as a partner. Do you, do you feel that? As in, I felt that, yeah. that uh, people are more open to doing business um, yeah. with, you know, with such people. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, for me, like in my case, I have to pretend I don't, like I have that uh, Wagwarian accent. You, you, you have to pretend, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, otherwise, they would just see like, oh, okay, you're just probably bullshitting with some fake passport or something. I have to pretend like, oh, this is very good, I really like it. Then, yeah. Oh, you don't have the, to, you look Chinese, don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah but you know, but pretending but, to be a then, foreign. Yeah, otherwise, like people will say, oh, you just have a passport, like, if, if you speak Florence Chinese and look like Chinese. But you speak English. That's a difference. And by the yeah. way, English yeah. is also one tool to tell like which class that person belong to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, I, like even even for like the like, where we often go on the Chinese version of the clubhouse, right? Like people who are not currently in China, they are like a foreign land. No matter like if they are uh, a visa student or like you know uh, immigrants, they. Do you, do you realize they constantly like subtly insert the line of oh I'm in Japan or oh I'm in US oh I'm different than you like they subtle brags can't you did you guys find out that find that yeah out? I know, but uh, but I think that is a very common thing with a lot of people you know like uh, mm -hmm. yeah but you're right you know probably it's mm -hmm. like kind of a trying to differentiate yourself from the masses, you know, yeah, yeah. chasing that, oh, you know, we, we, you know, I have elevated myself to a next yeah. level. You are still yeah. at, you know, still yeah. at. Whenever they say that, I picture those uh, really, like, just f fresh off the boat looking motherfuckers in Chinatown of all over the world. <laughs> like, I still don't, I just I, I respect them less. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like, for Chinese people, they probably, like, it's a good, good tagline. It's a, it's a it's like wearing a fancy shirt or like a higher brand shoes or bag it's like oh um the years i lived in japan 
Mm. For shit yeah, like but that, I, right? yeah, I think it's a subtle brag. Actually, you know, sometimes even very over, uh, openly bragging about the fact that I live in a certain location or a certain country. Mm. You know? I, 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 it reminded me that yesterday, yesterday midnight, there was a Tuhao who called me. Mm. Um, that was a guy I met uh, eight years ago. And we oh. did not speak for years. five years, mm. four years, or five years. Mm. But suddenly he called me and he was drunk. Mm. He was drinking with some friends. And then he, he met somebody from Shanghai. Mm. So he's, 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 he, he's excited. Yeah, he got excited. I, I also know a friend from, from Shanghai. So he mm. called me. And then he told me that oh, he had really missed our Indian friend, Babuji. Mm. Because he was drunk, so he was talking bullshit, right? But he mm. was like, oh, I really like him. I have a lot of foreign friends. Mm. I, uh, like, like, just, uh, you know, like, he, he was he was very proud that he has foreign friends and he yeah. speak a few English words. So, yeah. so, so it's just to explain that Tu Hao Ming's a super rich guy who doesn't have education. Mm. Yes. Horses, though. Yeah, he has horses. He has factory. He's in mm. manufacturing. He has a lot of money. But he's, Horse he's, as in the animals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't have a, a knowledge. <laughs> so this is something that he l- lacks, and he wants to like, like, like make it up, make it up, or somehow like from other his friends, the friends he has, to show that he show show showcase his missing part. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the app actually makes sense, you know, because he might, uh, let, if you go by the theory of hierarchy of Maslow's, right, he might be feeling that the only way to elevate himself from uh, a rich, uh, a rich uh, guy with no knowledge is to surround himself with people with knowledge. And eventually that might rub, rub off on him, mm. you know, and he might also look a part of a social class which has rich and educated people like you know there are a lot of um, uh, this is one of the class system which i feel is very prominent since you mentioned this word too how i think this word itself is kind of i would not say derogatory but uh, it's a way to describe a bunch of people who have just made money recently without Mm acquiring what we call in Western civilization, like civilized class. Yeah. So you know, they have money, but uh, so they can afford, let's say, going to fancy, fancy things. Yeah, and they can buy fancy things, but they don't know how to eat in a fancy restaurant. They don't know how to appreciate uh, finer things in life. Yeah. And, and that, I think that segment is huge in China because a lot of people have made their money in recent 20, 30, 40 years, right? So, there are a lot of sudden rich people. Uh, uh, there, there are a lot of people who have just made their money uh, because of the resources they were allocated, or they made their money because the country was growing over. Uh, so they don't have so-called uh, for the lack education. of education. Yeah, lack of better word, education or uh, appreciation for finer things in life. Yeah. So they buy art because everybody tells them that's good art, not because they understand art. Yeah. So I feel that that's also, in a way, a class system which is created in China in last, let's say, 20 years, 30 years, right? Yeah, 20 years. Uh, yeah, so this is the class system of, like, in the class system of money, these people are on the top. But yeah. in the class system of education or knowledge, these people are at the bottom. Right. Uh, these people finally can afford the most expensive wines. Then they mix it with Sprite, then chuck it down in a whole yeah. bottle. Yeah. Uh, without really understanding <laughs> like the, the wine's value. Yeah. Things like that. Mm. So in, in, your, uh, in your conversation, Jacob, you mentioned about accent, you know, I think that's also one of the way people discriminate people here. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Not just English accent, but I know a lot of, uh, like, this is a very common term used and thrown around here in Shanghai is called Vaidiran, you know, but mm. yeah. Vaidiran basically means a foreign person. So right. It's not derogatory in any format, but if you try and understand the localized, the colloquial meaning of uh, Vaidiran, it, it means somebody who's an outsider and they see them as a threat or see them as 
ah, you know, if there is a mistake being made, oh, it must be a Vaidhi run. If there is something wrong with Shanghai, it's the Vaidhi run. If, you know, if, you know, so they use this term as, uh, like what Americans use, uh, you know, for the people in, living in US, especially in, in southern part, in the borders, they always blame a lot of their issues for illegal immigrants. Yeah. So I feel that, that of course, it's not as harsh as telling illegal immigrants, but there is this distinction based on the way they, where they come from and the accent of Chinese they have, right? So, yeah. yeah. This is a caste system based on where you're from. Right. Yeah, you were mentioning about this, the social, the, the social security that you you can never escape the. Yeah, in China there is this uh, hukou, the household system, where uh, on the book, on household book, it tells that you are um, a city citizen, urban system, citizen, or you are from a like, agricultural background, it means like you're a farmer, yeah. or like peasant right. so that's in the in the book and that that dif different dif differentiate people um in terms of uh, social securities uh like what what kind of school your kids can go to yeah because you, you usually you have to go back to your hometown to get treated of course you can also get treated in big cities using the social securities right now but yeah. there is a difference you have to like, get a get a book or get a, a card for that city, you have to connect it to the, your your social security back home. So it's 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 still it's in the pro it's in the process of combining everything, but still is there is a difference that you're from the from the countryside or you're from the city, because that can tell a lot a lot of yeah. difference. Uh, yeah. So I think this is something which I I don't know maybe I don't understand maybe you guys would be in a better position. What do you judge, Jacob, a person who is um, like who speaks Chinese to you? Uh -huh. His accent is kind of weird and you don't recognize it. Would you judge that person? I would be curious. Like for me, I'm I enjoy all accent. I mock accent. I like accent. I think like I even think like the the reason why Chinese film industry is failing is there's less accented film because everyone actually has an accent but uh, when they're making film they all just made it to official Mandarin so it always sounds fake so people cannot relate so I yeah. feel like accent is the root of the culture it's a, yeah. it's like when we're listening to rap music or like a good movie like you know like Martin Scorsese everyone talks like you know New York Italians right like right. or like New Orleans rap songs are different than the West Coast rap songs. You know that's that's where the culture is. I enjoy those, but uh, I, when I go to different cities, I try to pretend to speak their accent. Yeah, but does that get you like benefits? Yeah. Yeah. See, so I think that that yeah, like. Yeah, sure. even like back in like maybe a decade ago, like if you uh, when the taxi cab was still like a thing, um, uh, people always like if, if the taxi driver hears you speak another accent, he will probably detour the shit out of you and charge you more money. You know, just right. uh, that's the common like understanding of that that culture. And uh, yeah, like whenever we go to a different city and when we are taking cabs, we will try to speak like when we're Beijing, we speak like a little bit like Shervo, you know, things like that with that kind of accent, like Beijing accent. But in Shanghai, it's like a Qian, <laughs> shit like that, you know, okay. just to, you know, making like make the local driver thinks you're from the local. Uh. Yeah, but if you, if you see the whole picture, as in whatever you guys are telling me about the class system, so then the, the class system is only based on two things, right? Yeah. In China at this, at this stage is primarily uh, the place you belong to, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And second is wealth and knowledge, you know, like I'm combining wealth and knowledge into one category. But, you know, these are the two primary bases on which people are defining which class you belong to. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I would agree. Yes, the only two. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, this as a foreigner, I constantly hear about this thing called social credit. You know, social credits, 
scoring system. Like, you know, oh, if you do something, if you have lower score on your WeChat, you do something. Oh, uh, yeah. But that you, you can't tell unless you go to the bank and then take a, the, the credit report of that person illegally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get it. You don't get to see that. So so people don't know that, oh, this person has low social security. No, no. Okay. So that's that way they cannot discriminate. You. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of accent, right? Uh -huh. Because so so the, the education, uh, we we our education went that way. So everybody was like taught in Mandarin in school. So, but the more education you get, your uh, Mandarin becomes better. Yeah. So if you can speak proper Mandarin, it means that you receive proper education. And mm. if you don't, it means that maybe you did not, maybe you did not finish like middle school, high school. So again, from from your accent, you're in when you speak Mandarin, you can t people can tell where you're from. So your accent can actually tell a lot about you, and people yeah. can based on that yeah huh. but, yeah but accent just just an accent like for example in shanghai which is like very multicultural multi, yeah. uh, would that have any discrimination like what kind of discrimination you face if you are from a different accent let's say in shanghai somebody from uh, anhui comes across here do they get discriminated badly or like you know, you know, how, what kind of discrimination? Just to understand. <laughs> you know that in every uh, provinces, they have their own uh, stereotype, right? If you want to talk about it, people will say, <laughs> I don't want, <laughs> want to say that because it's not fair. Well, what kind Just of give people? a bad example. Yeah. Like, like, for example, Hunan, uh, sorry, Henan people. Uh, like people. Oh, Henan people get the most of the shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just call them frauds, right? Uh, but so when when people hear you, if you have a Henan accent, it must be a scammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like this kind of biasness. But they are right. Back in the days, once upon a time, like there were like part part of Henan, like a little like a county of Henan. Uh, they were so poor, so they all went out, and uh, whatever makes money by then was scamming. So. They yeah. build the reputation. Then the whole country judges the entire province based on that. Yeah, but, but then, the, yeah, it's not there anymore. Yeah, I mean, not a lot. I mean, plus like scammers are from everywhere now. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think a lot of like I think some of the stereotypes which I've heard, uh, one of them is uh, Shanghai people are very cold. You know, like they mm. don't care about anybody other than. Oh, own. that I agree, and it's still true. Yeah, Shanghai people. Are, I not, and this is not just because they are from big city. I guess that's their personality. Mm, yeah, it's I think it's a city's personality also, like individuals also. Yeah, so that is it's also one of the stereotypes. The other is like, uh, if you are rich and you're from Shangxi, you are basically made your money from mining. Coal. Yeah. Mining. Is that just <laughs> kind of <right? laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, the majority of the Shenzhen, because I, I guess, uh, how can we start? I don't want to go back too long, but uh, I felt uh, basically China was built on the socialism uh, regime, right? So uh, at the beginning, the, the slogan was no class. There's everyone's equal, right? Uh -huh. But then, uh, you know, economics hit hard, like people are just dying and suffering. So it's better to, you know, to communicate with the world and... Uh, start to get the country rich so then there's a lot of new policies coming out uh then all these people with the equal equally like um uh, like they were having the same uh, welfare and education system but then whoever was at having the opportunity of doing business they suddenly got super rich so they are all new money so it's all like you know, like rap artists, like in rap songs, not rap artists, and they are probably more educated. But like what they are portraying is like they suddenly got super rich. They just gonna enjoy all the fancy things. But then uh, they realize the harder, I mean, the higher they go, they they do not understand this wealthy wor world and its its system and uh, the cultures of the civilized. Uh, uh, nations, you know, 
the, the history and everything, like how to act real rich instead of just having money. Yeah, but that happened. Like, see, there are there are a, a certain generation of people who have already yeah. uh, became rich by two ways. One is like you know, just uh, as you said, you know, economics, uh, just, yeah, opportunities, just pure, pure of because of opportunity. But there are also people have used economics to their advantage in a long term. Like people who worked in offices and stuff like that. They've also made a decent amount of money. And uh, compared to let's say forty years ago till right. today, there yeah. is a substantial percentage of population which is richer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when I'm saying substantial, it's probably around like 400, 500 million people have made uh, economic benefits across last 40 years, 50 years in China. So there's a huge chunk of people. So yes, there are some percentage of people who have made a lot of money purely because of, let's say, lack of skill, but luck. Uh, yeah. Some of them have made their money because of skill. And some of them yeah. made their money slowly. Some of them have made money over that. Like, yeah. So there are, uh, the, even though the country's policy is like, you know, uh, started with a socialist philosophy, which still exists, but uh, there have been a disparity in terms of how people became rich. Of course, in the longer run, I guess the focus is to have everybody rich. And that's the country's focus usually, right? Well, uh, but... Uh, in that process of certain bunch of people becoming rich faster and certain bunch of people becoming rich slightly slower and certain mm. bunch of people still being like, you know, uh, working slow, that automatically has created this uh, class system of super wealthy, mm. super wealthy who became rich overnight, super wealthy who are uh, very planned and structured, super yeah. wealthy because they were connected to some kind of family, you know, like a Martha kind of rich, rich parents and stuff like that. Super wealthy because they educated themselves very well and then yeah. went to foreign countries and then made their revenue there. So there is, there's already like the last 40, 50 years, purely because of wealth and the creation of wealth in the country, uh, in a very disproportionate, dis like, you know, in, not in a very uniform way, mm -hmm. resulted in multiple class systems right and, yeah yeah and even education for that matter as in even though china is kind of like a fairly educated country as in education is free for yeah. most people uh, there is still uh, like good universities great universities and then there are like so called ordinary and you know okay universities so so you end up uh, having a, a small chunk of people getting highly educated uh, and then you have majority of the chunk of people who are educated here and there, and then some people who are like barely educated, but they're educated in, in terms of literacy, maybe like they, they can read and write, but. Uh, yeah, I just checked this, uh, the, the Guinea index Guinea of China index, yeah, 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 yeah. in 2015. Uh, it was 0 0.46, okay. which is higher than most of most of the countries. 2050. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was fifteen. We have not reached there yet. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you. Covered. Yeah. So the, the the poverty gap, income gap is a is a huge. Mm. So yeah, I think that is one of the reasons. I feel, uh, as J Jacob and you know Dongu both were mentioned, I think it's clearly the biggest class system in China. If we shorten it to one word, it's probably the wealth accumulation, the mm. speed of wealth accumulation, not just wealth accumulation, speed of wealth accumulation. And, and I think government has realized this problem. That's why uh, government started doing this uh, prosperity uh, poverty alleviation project since right. uh, like a few few decades ago. Right, yeah. And finally, last year, this year, the yeah. the number they of all the rich guys took all their money. Yeah, I think they should do that. As a, as a socialism country, uh, they should do that. Yeah, I, I, I think, I don't know, maybe, see, uh, I know it sounds very pro-communist uh, statement, what I'm making, but I feel that, yeah, China might not be a perfect socialist communist country, but uh, I don't see any other country in the world who has managed to put out uh, 
300, 400 million people out of poverty in the last 40 years. No country in the world has done it. And this is a fucking huge task. Of yeah. course, there have been problems and stuff like that. Mm. So I feel the class system is not really a concern for the government at this stage uh, because we are still focusing on how do we get more people out of poverty rather than, you know, let me figure out how to make everybody rich or balancing things out. Of course, That's eventually. That's the focus right now, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right now, maybe they're slowly turning, but it will still take a few years yeah. or maybe like a few decades before, let's say, everybody. Because I think going back to making everybody poor, that's not an option because then the country will break down, you know, people will be very happy. So the only option as a socialist Chinese philosophy should be making everybody rich. And then that that's a fair uh, way of looking at things. Yeah. Maybe not have super, super rich people because it's not right. Like to be very mm. honest, no country should have super, super rich people when there are people dying on the streets. It, yeah. doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Like I find this, American model of capitalism very brutal because at one stage you have uh, people like Jeff Bezos or you know Elon Musk who are flying in space and spending billions on uh, things which are relevant. I'm not saying that space travel and all those things are not relevant. They are relevant, but at the same time, if you are not able to take care of people dying out of homelessness in, in this in your streets. Uh, then your relevance becomes questionable. You know, do I really need to spend on space if I can't take care of people's hunger? Yeah. So I feel that China has to manage that. You know, in, in a very in a smarter way. I, I know uh, probably is difficult because I don't think anybody has done that. You know, because across history, if you see historically. Uh, since we have managed to create civilizations, there's always been a gap between rich and poor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the nature of capital to grow, right? To take over more profit, more va like values from the, the other classes. I mean, that, that that's the whole idea. But as a country, as a powerful government, it's, it is their responsibility to make sure that people, like at least majority of the nation gets the equal ch chance yeah, but how do, you, life, how, how, do you, how, how do you not to be exploited? How do you do that without? China is taking hardcore methods to to do that, right? Like this anti-monopoly law. No, 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 no. I'm saying the like coming, this, coming back the, to the, the class companies. system. How do you handle this without creating a new class system? You don't create a new class system. You have to stop it. I mean, you have to slow it down when it's growing. When it's, when it's growing, mm -hmm. when the gap is becoming bigger, you have to slow it down. I don't know how to do that, but uh, I just know like um, most of the uh, capitalism countries, or as we call like the Western societies, they don't care about the poor people, no matter what. Like, just you know. <laughs> for vote, for politicking, for that, you know, keep the blue collar happy, keep the mid class happy and uh, keep the rich people richer. And uh, yeah, then if you're too poor, then you're off the rail. You, nobody gives a shit about you. But China is trying to care. And what they do is very punk rock or like very, it's more Hollywood film than others. Like we punch all the, <laughs> by punching all the Mac Zuckerbergs or like the Amazon dude. Like I know. Them, I mean, right? I know. I, I. This is very amazing. That how did we manage to reach to a world where rich people are the good guys? I don't get it. I don't. Yeah. Like, oh, if if Americans have learned anything from their history, French people have learned anything from their history. All revolutions are about fighting the rich people, fighting yeah. the powerful people, yeah. fighting the elite, like bringing systematic change where you can yeah. bring back uh, people who, from who higher. Who told you they are good guys? No, I think you know who's saying they're good guys. Celebration it's themselves. Right? Media owned by them. Yeah. <laughs> celebration. And they own them. Yeah, but celebration of rich guys, celebration of uh, super rich. I'm mean, again. See, I am. It's not. It's absolutely wrong to think that people should not be wealthy. People should be wealthy. People should enjoy convenience to and irrespective of what class you belong, you should have the right to education to the level where you can fit into a formidable society, right? Uh, you, if you chose not to educate yourself, then it's your fault. Then you can be blamed for that. 
But in terms of wealth creation, if you don't give the opportunity to everybody to create wealth and then blame the poor, I think that's not fair, right? I think that's why the class system becomes more, how do I say it, more venomous. You know, when, when class system is not a problem if everything works in a designed way, right? Okay, middle class does this and they're happy there. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the blue collar does blue collar job and they're happy there. Uh, white collar people do white collar job and they're happy there. The problem is when you see uh, a bunch of homeless people dying because of some storm mm -hmm. and, and at the same day on the same newspaper, you see a headline that oh, some rich people have, uh, you know, bought an expensive yacht mm -hmm. sailing in the same sea, which was resulted into the flood of dying of poor. I mean, that unfairness creates this venomous circle of I hate class system or I have a problem with the class system. And that's when the class system's problems arises. If everything is peaceful, I feel things will not, uh, you know, would not get worse because it, we can't take class system out of the our human mentality. We'll always judge people because that's how we are, right? I think human beings are always known for uh, judging people. As in, even if you don't have if we replace everybody with wealth, you might start judging people them on their clothing. You know, you might uh, judge people like rich people judge rich people on basis of their taste. Rich people don't want to be the same as others and others want to become rich people. No, no, but I'm saying that let's say six rich people get together. They also have a class system in their rich system. Yeah. Like, for example, all of them are billionaires, but they might judge them based on, oh, this guy doesn't understand art. So he's lower class when it comes to understanding of art. Yeah, people want to be different, right? People always compare, yeah. even within the poor people or the rich people. People always want to be better than others. So just want to keep be trying to be different from the other people. Oh, right. So I don't uh, think... From... Yeah, go ahead, Jacob. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, from the macro, uh, macro level, I feel like the problems uh, goes to all society, not just like today's topic, Chinese classes or like, you know, it's always like, does a society, a modern society like today require cert to keep certain people so poor that they cannot get education? They, they have to die on the street or die in their village and by poverty or like lack of all like, uh, you know, welfare and uh, infrastructures, or like these people can be helped. Like we don't like the society does not need this class. Like we can eliminate the lowest class, so mm -hmm. make the world a better place. If unless like the world has to run on the death of these people, then we should definitely eliminate that. Right? That's right. the ma ma macro level. And from the micro level, like the poorest poor, like I've been to, like, you know, Chinese has those um, uh, charities. I went with uh, like a friend of ch uh, friend's charity to some like distant village in like Northwest region. They are all living on a mountain near like a cliff. There's yellow river down there, but it's not water resource. And the kids has to walk uh, like five kilo to ten kilos to like only the only public school, and the school has like twenty students, and uh, five of them are from grade one to three. So like because there are only five people, so they all take classes together, and then these people were all like I, the time I went there, there were like like uh, mental illness people locked up in the room like there's a lock outside of a, like a shitty room and uh, saying, oh, she went crazy. So we just prisoned her, <laughs> caged her or like and their water sources were like from uh, plastic wraps putting on the roof of the clay made houses to gather raindrops, then goes into like a well, then somewhat they, they heat it up and uh, make it uh, clarify a little bit. And I ask the people, why don't you guys thinking of like, you know, moving out? They're like, nah, our families were, you know, first, they don't know where to move out. That's the lack of education. Then because the less you know or less you understand, the less you've been educated, you don't know what to believe. Then there are many options of like voodoo shit or like superstitious or tradition talk. 
they say, oh, our, our generations have been buried on this mountain. So we live here, we die here as if they're proud of this, but they're just purely like stubborn and, and you know, in, in a way stupid. Like in a way, like it's so politically wrong, but in a way they chose, like they should fight for it instead of, you know, just settling there. Like, right. This is why, like, why you have to like, mm. spread the education everywhere. We make yeah. sure everyone gets educated. Yeah. There's yeah. No, like they cannot generate value. They just live there and they don't move. That's just next level laziness to me. Like that's the hardcore otaku, like way better than Japan. It's just too much. But I, I think there's, 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 see there are, I can't, because I, this is the kind of problem which it happens very commonly in India, right? Like there's a lot of people who are uh, poor, uh, a lot of people who are poor, and a lot of people who want to don't want to move to the bigger cities uh, for two reasons. One is of course they are not aware of what mm -hmm. opportunity there know, is, right? There is in the bigger city, or you know they go to a, a better town and in of course there is this belief system which can only be as you rightly mentioned only be eliminated to education now yeah. in a lot of countries government cannot get involved you know because they have an economic system they have a government system which says that you know individually uh, well, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do you know government will only get involved in certain like in the us you know they don't get involved in uh, these kind of matters and, and then it just becomes a circle of poverty and then and then there are uh, these these are the set of people who are poor because of uh, maybe because of their traditional beliefs i would i would not go so far to say that it's because only because of their traditional beliefs, because lack of education so. yeah. but then there is this other section of poor people who are kept poor or made poor because nobody gives a fuck about them. Yeah, it's yeah. because there's a large part. Like if you if you if you see in um, like in the US, right? The US is uh, less of you know superstitious. Of course, there are still stupid people who believe in fairies and vampires and Jesus Christ. But I'm talking about uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about people who are poor because not because they don't want to leave their lands. It just they don't have opportunities like you know uh, people of color you know, hispanic people and black people in in in, uh, in the us or in china there are a lot of people who are from smaller cities they want to come to big cities uh, but there is no clear way like china did this in a very successful way around 30 40 years ago when they uh, kind of mandatory migration for mm -hmm. a lot of uh, village people to cities and then cities people to village and so that you know there could be like this churning of population and then that can create wealth and that worked really well of course it was a painful thing for the beginning because a lot yeah. of people now want to be away from their uh, you know places where they were born but you see what has happened today and then it's because you know a lot of wealth has been created because they forced people from or they told people from Beijing who are well educated to move to smaller cities and create businesses there and they created and they created wealth there they created wealth and they created livelihoods for a lot of local people if you can't move the local people help bring smart people to the local people mm. right so there was this twin way of creating this system I, again this is nothing to do with our class but this system. is also the, the like the creating classes class system yeah so it eventually what happened is that so you can't avoid the trap of getting into class system you you will eventually because this fall. is how the economics grow. Yeah, but at least as as you rightly mentioned, Jacob, I think this is a very strong point. If there is a certain of certain class of people who are so neglected and so badly treated by the world, mm. not just China but overall as the mm. world, like poor, there is no need for us to kill poor people. As in, there is no need for letting poor people die of hunger. As in, mm. yeah we have enough resources in the world so i feel that irrespective of whether we cannot eliminate the whole class system as such but at least eliminate a class of people who are dying because of hunger and i think that can be done by progressive thinking that can be done by wealth redistribution that can be done by 
government policies that can be done by a lot of things like we can avoid poor government people. already claimed that they have done that no no i'm just saying they, overall they in the achieved world. that by 2021 but yeah so, around the world that's a different story well, a because there power. is no power who can do that because yeah. power is so segregated and even the, the most powerful politicians don't have power to do that right you know who are the people who are running this the earth the world mm. and they don't give a fuck mm. so oh illuminatis <laughs> <laughs> now i'm saying that even the global leaders you know yeah you're right you know people most of the politicians especially both in democratic and non-democratic country usually won't give a fuck about people unless they feel genuinely that we need to i i think there is an effort i, I would not say it has been extraordinarily successful or not uh but there is at least an effort from few countries and china is one of them who is who, who else is doing that and there are some other countries around the, the world where they're trying to do as in of course not what they're claiming to do a vietnam is trying to do and they're trying to bring people out of Yay. poverty another china, socialism country and china china is trying to do uh, and uh, some north european countries right yeah yeah nordic countries have actually fairly done it well you know they've been yeah, yeah. They've done it, but they have a small population. So, They're like, social see, capitalism country. Yeah, the, yeah, so-called socialist capitalist, like social yeah. capitalism country with democracy in it. They have been, they managed to do it. So yeah. there are there are some options, but I think still a large population in the world will suffer from the class system, whether uh, whether it gets eliminated or not is is actually a choice. It's not forces of nature that we can't predict. Human class system is is a choice of humans. We can eliminate uh, the at least very very bad class system very easily. We we have done it in the past. We have at least tried eliminating but racism. But just think about it. Why would a person who's benefited by this class system want to change it? That's the thing. That that's that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, right? that that's my question. Like I feel uh, say like just uh, if humanity is a blank paper and uh, then uh, when we want to make everyone live more comfortably and more civilized and educated we have to start with one then turns to 10 turns to 100 right so it's always start from one point so there's not it's never like starting from everyone and uh, because the opportunities and and everything like mm -hmm. the surroundings and all that things yeah. around yeah, yeah so uh say like say china for example all the cities in china are like equally just cities and in one country and then uh shanghai became like the number one economic or like educated uh, most developed city then right. because uh, for example shanghai became the number one right then all the others are like just zeros and all the other uh, people want to come to Shanghai. But then when the people come, Shanghai will say, oh, we finally had like a good system running. And all these poor, less educated people come here, scam us, you know, and uh, drink our wines with no taste or everything. So they started to be afraid of those people. Hmm. Maybe like they will rob or steal for poverty reasons, right? because they were too poor they did not know what to do they cannot afford that life but they want to come to here then the class forms because mm -hmm. they have to build prisons to catch most of these and imagine that became like like the the first like two classes divided one is the higher class one is the the poorer class mm -hmm. then all these people started to slowly developing their thing then there's the lower class up here just because of that like i think american racism is just like that right, right. but then they were like they did something intentionally just to you know keep the black people poor yeah to feel safe that's the thing right and also like all the the the, the, the failed social socialism <laughs> the Hitler one is also like, oh, these people are bad. They're scamming people. Let's burn them, right? Like yeah. the Nazis. It's all like taking to extreme measures, but Hitler was not socialist, by the way. Hitler was against uh, communist also. Oh, oh. oh, I thought I thought the the slogan was more socialist than 
No, I think I think this again. Let, that's a different topic. But yeah, he was oh. not. So it's, yeah, it's, okay. Yeah, but yeah, all I'm saying is like so yeah. Yeah, that's not. But the, <laughs> but the problem <laughs> always <laughs> comes to okay. What I'm trying to say is the problem always comes to one. The ones has reached the goal, then the human greed appeared. They just want to get better and richer and even more richer, right?、Yeah. So they forget about oh, I'm already at. The first goal. Let's help the others to come up to the same level. Then we reach up, right? I think this is the the mentality that the modern society has to have. Although I know it's just a dream. It's just some really what I'm saying is just、like、elementary essays. But but <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. But I think、possible. that's that's the secret. I mean, in today's conversation, what we were trying to If if there is one solution, I know I'm, I'm sure there are like we we are not an expert to solve this social issue, but I think、mm. as rightly pointed out, you know I think the most important thing is that the human willingness, it's, it's our willingness. Class system is not created by some、uh, natural events; it's created by us, you know. And、yeah. the only way we can eliminate it. Yeah,、But、that's what I feel like. Maybe when.、Uh... Dongu was asking like the first question before the podcast, like how do we?、Uh, I mean, at the beginning of the podcast, how do we、uh, judge the people? I would say like I have to judge people from like their honesty by saying、um, by by mean,、uh, meaning that、uh, their 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 ethic, moral, that represent they are、uh, yeah. educated and civilized. Because as a modern day human being, you have to. Have compassion. You have to know the duties and obligations. Also, knowing yourself, like you have your like pet peeves and shit. Like you know, make the inner and exterior understanding of oneself. Like、uh, also, you cannot ignore that. Oh, I'm rich. I, I don't care. Like that's a very toxic mentality of humans. Yeah,、nowadays. let's、uh, stay hopeful. Mm. Huh. Anyways,、um, good topic for today. As in, of course, we have not done anything、uh, to solve it, but、uh, we will be more conscious. As in, I hope that our listeners will also be more conscious with respect to what、uh, class you fall in.、Uh, thank you again for today's、uh, podcast. Good、uh, topic. Next week we will come back again with a new topic.、Uh, and、uh, ciao. Bye bye. Bye. Oh. Oh.、Uh. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs>